It's 1-800-LAW-1010, 1-800-LAW-1010.com. Paul Harding's on the phone. Good morning, Paul. Yes, I am. Good morning. Good morning, guys. So, Paul. It's your stoop, Quinn. Here's the thing. Uh, I got this uh, front stoop of my house, and it's mm. it's wicked slippery. Like, I mean, yeah. just like, like, like terribly slippery. Now, you didn't know about it until the moving guy. What, what, the moving the, guy pointed it out to you, didn't he? Oh, no, no, I've known about this since day one, oh, okay. but the moving guy brought it up this week with the new couch and stuff, and I'm like, okay. And I started thinking to myself, what happens if I'm a renter? Uh, what happens if somebody slips on my property, uh, Paul? Is that my responsibility, or is it my landlord's responsibility? Yeah, it, it's your landlord's responsibility. I mean, I think it's a general proposition. We all want to do what's, what's right and safe and keep everybody from getting hurt. But from a liability or legal perspective, if you own the property, you've got to be really cautious this time of the year kind of to make sure that things are kind of salted and cleaned up the best they can be. Now, saying that, and we're having storm after storm, um, you know, there's going to be some areas that are, that are that are a little bit dangerous that are not going to be a liability situation, you know. But, but yeah, it's the landlord, not the tenant, but I think we all have a responsibility but, to just kind of do what's right. All right, Paul, but in my case, part of my lease agreement is I take care of the plowing and I assume the shoveling. I haven't done mm-hmm. much of that. But <laughs> yeah. so, is my landlord relieved of anything? Is that on me mm-hmm. now? Since I'm the I'm I handle the driveway and walkways. Yeah, no, he's, he's really not. I mean, nice. he's relieved of doing that day to day operation, <laughs> but he has a duty to kind of oversee it to make sure you're doing the right things. Um, yeah, that that's a way for the landlord not to physically have to to be there, but but they really can never be absentee. They have to make sure it's their ultimate responsibility. It's their uh, insurance company that they're the one that has it in place uh, that they've uh, sort of acknowledged that they're going to keep it safe even if they've delegated to you or to someone else to Still come in and them. snow and plow yeah Paul when I was in uh, in Minnesota I uh, I, I had I, did, I was living out of my mom's basement and I didn't I had to have like one of those UPS boxes you know I didn't have a mailing address yeah. or anything so I was going to the UPS uh, store in St. Louis Park, Minnesota, and I was on. It was like one of those mini malls, and I slipped and I fell and I hurt my knee. And I know you say keep our keep our number on you, uh, one eight hundred law ten ten. If anything happens, and so you can call right then and there. I wish I'd had that. What would I gotten? Because uh, I know uh, uh, better call Saul. He'll tell me I get eight grand for something like that. Is that right? <laughs> you know, it, it, so there's there's really no magic formula. It really comes down to number one, proving liability, showing that the landlord failed to do what was reasonable. Again, a storm in progress, there's no case at all. Oh, so if you're really? getting hurt while a storm's coming down, yeah, there's got to be a reasonable amount of time for the for the person in charge of the property to be able to clean it up. But and in terms of the value of the case, it really depends upon what happens to you. All so, right. you know, if you kind of fall and have some bruising, you know, it probably has no, no value at all. Um, if you fall and, and you break your leg and have some surgery, then, then the numbers far exceed that. So it, it really is case-specific. And yeah, but what about if I ha- if I fell and then all of a sudden, like six, six eight years later, my knee starts hurting, and uh, how am I supposed to know? Yeah, we call that out, out of luck. Oh. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that doesn't work so well. All right, fine. Hey, one more quick one, because if I'm, sure. a, if I'm a property owner and there's a fire hydrant on my property, I have to shovel it out. If I'm renting, do, yeah. if I'm yeah. renting that property, do I still have to shovel it out? Not that I wouldn't. I just want I'm just curious. Yeah, uh, you know, it depends what, you, what your lease says as a tenant. If your lease says you have to, that's a serious lease you sign if you've got to be digging out fire hydrants. But I guess it could be in there. Okay. But the general proposition, it is the property it is the property owner who has to do that. And ultimately what we really see is some of the city officials uh, often coming by and, and doing what some of the property owners don't do very well. Paul, when I came up here to sign my lease... I yeah. literally sat with my landlord for three hours, what? going line by line. He's a property manager in Brooklyn. It's what he does, and yeah. he's yeah. so thorough, line I, by line. So he Never. sat you down, or you sat we, him down? We sat down with him. Oh, I, I would have just signed it. Oh, yeah, you what the me? hell? Why didn't you just sign it? <laughs> I tried to. I'm like, let's get out of here. I'm paying oh. for a sitter here. So he was making sure. He went line by yeah. line. That's why I'm always no. so cautious with him. That's why I'm looking to move. No. <laughs> uh, there he's you got go. to jumping, yeah. <laughs> Hey, All right. good stuff this morning. Stuff everyone can use. We appreciate the time, Paul. All right, guys. Be safe out there. 1-800-LAW-1010, 1-800-LAW-1010.com. It's Paul Harding from Martin Harding and Mazzotti. It's Quinn and Cantera, Picks 106. Quinn and Cantera, mornings on Picks 106.